We might concede our sovereignty to China if we don't pay back its loans, so says the House of Representatives. And what are the reasons for the low female participation in Nigerian politics? This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Now, the House of Representatives has revealed its plans to review all loan agreements and conditions signed by the federal government. The House Committee on Treaties, Protocols and Agreements had recently begun an investigation into the loans taken by the country and had raised an alarm over loan agreements Nigeria signed with China, saying that the agreement might force Nigeria to concede its sovereignty to the Asian country if the loans were not paid back. However, the Minister of Transportation, Roti Miyamichi, has advised lawmakers to stop the investigation into the Chinese loans, saying that the probe could send a wrong signal to China, which could stop the loans and disrupt the nation's rail projects. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Sokonte Davies, the former director of Marine Operations, Nigerian Ports Authority. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. We also have Mr. Gbolaoba, Public Affairs Analyst. A pleasure to see you once again, sir. Well, it's a pleasure to be on your side. Thank you for the opportunity once again. All right, let's start with you, uh, Mr. Oba. Members of the House, they're raising the alarm over loan agreements Nigeria signed with China, implying, as I said in the preamble, that this agreement might imply we are signing our sovereignty um, over to uh, China if the loans are not paid back. We also know that the Minister of Transportation has tried to um, allay fears and has made attempt to say that the country's sovereignty wasn't signed off. Rather, the clause is that in case the country defaults, China will come to collect the items agreed on porn. For the layman that is watching, uh, please Help us make sense of this. What does all this mean to you? It means that all the agencies of government, or indeed the two arms of government in this respect, are working as they should work. It is incumbent on the parliament in a liberal democracy to make sure that treaties, agreements, and contracts entered into by the country is reviewed. And the parliament in this instance, the committee of, of the House of Representatives is doing the right thing they should be doing. Review the contractual obligations and protocols entered into by the country. Now, having established the fact that the legislative arm or the committee of the legislative arm is doing what it ought to, it is also incumbent on a chieftain of the executive arm of government to make sure that it delivers on the portfolio of its principal. And in this instance, Buhari promised that he was going to deliver infrastructure and Rotimi Amechi, being the Honorable Minister for, for Transportation in charge of railway infrastructure, nobody can take away the fact that since 1909, that the British colonialists delivered rail line in Nigeria no politician, however great, Namdia Zikwe, Tafa Balewa, or Bafemi Awolowo, none of them has ever delivered drill infrastructure before. And Rotimi Amechi has done it. You know what? He wants to leave that legacy on a big note. And wanting to do that on a big note is imploring parliament, please, let us treat the, let us treat the Chinese to perfect this contract 
And once the contract has commenced, Parliament, you can do your own bid. You must remember that Rotimi Amechi was a parliamentarian and indeed the speaker of the River State House of Assembly. And he knows the he knows the technicalities and the methodologies of, of, of using parliamentary powers to stymie or encourage such uh, such that is is engrossed in. Let so me interject. Thinking everybody is playing his own beat. Mr. Oba, let me in, interject and bring in uh, Mr. Sokonte Davies uh, to uh, get his input as well. Riding off what Mr. Oba said, uh, the House of Representatives, the Senate, uh, the National Assembly now inclusive, um, don't they have a say in all the loans, uh, contract agreements that are signed? Don't they, that oversight function of reviewing this, have they failed in it now that they are investigating it? Isn't it medicine after that? Shouldn't they have done this due diligence before this situation? came up. Contracts are not the responsibility of National Assembly. When in the, in the National Assembly, sorry, the House of Representatives, there are two committees. Now there is a committee on loans and donor agencies. When the government is seeking for loans and it sends this request to National Assembly, essentially the committee on loans and a diligence that looks into this request. And when the committee is satisfied that the reason why this loan is, is being applied for or is being fought for, then it approves. And that is it. The next thing is for the executive arm to go into agreements and agreements and transactions. Agreements and transactions are not within the first view of National Assembly. What the National Assembly does is that when the agreements and the transactions are entered and the projects are, are being implemented, the National Assembly now goes to oversight to see that if what is requested, it is what, what is being implemented. So I do not understand really, I was in the National Assembly for eight years, as a member of the House of Representatives. I do not understand this issue of the National Assembly wanting to um, draft or participate in the drafting of agreements. Agreements are essential and totally the purview on the purview of the executive arm of government. All right. So Let that is yes. Um, thanks for the clarification. Uh, again, um, you did not say that they're, they are part of the vetting process, right? Let's get that out. They're part of the vetting process for these loans. I, I didn't get your question very well. No, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm asking a further clarification because I too had trouble getting all you said. Um, just to be clear, the National Assembly is part of the vetting pro, um, uh, process for such huge loans, right? For the approval of such huge loans. Okay, let's let's go. Okay, I'll come back to you, Mr. Davies. Just hang on, please. Let's see if the line will be better. Um, Mr. Oba, let's talk about the one that has been upsetting a lot of persons. Uh, Mr. Amechi's claim that China will not approve Nigeria's request for the loan uh, to finance some real projects um, if the House of Representatives continue uh, with the uh, probe. Uh, they're saying that if the, if the projects across the country will be affected, if the National Assembly continues with an ongoing probe, they see it as an attempt to intimidate the legislature into abandoning its constitutional role. Others say it's a ploy to stop the National Assembly from revealing the corruption involving federal government in contracting some of this law. What's your thinking on this? There are so many presumptions in that, in that opinion, so many presumptions in that but I need to go a little bit back to accentuate some points for the understanding of our viewers. You want to read the name of the committee of the, National, of the House of Representatives again. Read the name of the committee again. Uh, the committee of, is the, that of uh, treaties, protocols, and agreements. Fantastic. Treaties, protocols, and agreements. In any liberal democracy worth its name in gold, 
the parliament or the legislature normally reviews treaties, protocols, and agreements entered into by the executive arm of government. You must remember that the executive arm of government is more like the, the foot soldiers, the foot soldiers of a liberal democracy. They go out, they explore opportunities, and they come back. Once they have explored and exploited, they come back, and parliament will look at the methodologies with which they have, they have entered into agreement, and it is incumbent on parliament to say, you know what? Having reviewed this agreement, we have issues on this, on this, on this. Specifically in this instance, the House of Representatives Committee on Protocols, Treaties and Agreements says it has issues with the fact that in the contract provision, there is, with the fact that in the contract, there's a provision that is sitting, sitting a magnitude of the sovereignty of Nigeria. That is what they say they have problems with. However, I want to say emphatically here, and without, you know, without fear of contradiction, that when a nation goes a borrowing, automatically a part of your sovereignty, a sovereignty will be ceded away. They are just getting too, they're getting too academic about this. The truth is that it's a different thing. No, no, Mr. Mr. Well, Oba, I, I, can, I can let you just um, gloss over that. I need you to explain for the layman listening, because when you say the sovereignty and integrity of a nation, you're talking about not just the no, government, no, no. but the people inclusive. No, no. The two. Hello, excuse me. The two are totally different. Don't confuse your viewers. Sovereignty, sovereignty is different from integrity. All right, let's focus well, on go sovereignty. And borrow it. As a human being, as a human being, Sorry, my sister, I forgot your name now. Felicity. It ran off my head. M Melissa, when you walk into your bank and you take a loan, a part of your sovereignty as a human being, as you have ceded it. You know why? Because you will be subjected to a, a repayment regime. And once you default, once you default, a part of you will be taken. You must remember that whatever you, collater you, you collateralize a facility with is actually a part of your life because you, you bought those things by your sweat and, and, and the earnings you got from having expended a part of your life to earn money. Let's be very honest with ourselves. When people sit and want to, want to be too academic about, when you go and borrow in, what does the proverb say? Those who go, he who goes and borrow in, Goes a sorrowing. So it, that, the concern of the National Assembly then is legitimate when they say that they are concerned about it. And then we have the minister explaining that it's just for defaulting. Who do we go with? For the ordinary man that's listening to this, it's getting a bit more confusing. Well, you go with common sense. And common sense says that when you take a facility and you have not defaulted, your sovereignty is intact. When you take a facility and you have vitiated the contract by defaulting on, pay, on the payment agreement, your sovereignty naturally would, would be compromised to the extent to which whatever they have to subject you to, to repay the money you borrowed. All right. No, no, no country that goes a borrowing, no human being that goes a borrowing on the face of the earth has his or her sovereignty or okay. individual independence totally intact anymore. That's All right, Mr. Oba. Um, how much is that? How much making two points at this juncture? One point is we have already commenced phase one of this. The Chinese get easily irritated. Don't let's irritate them by doing this review at this juncture. We'll try and exploit that, that, that part of the conversation a little later. But let me quickly inform our viewers that we're not, um, uh, we don't have Mr. Davies on the line. As soon as we get him, we lost connect. Okay, have we reconnected? I'm told we have him now. Mr. Davies, can you hear me?
Okay, hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you for staying with us in spite of the poor network. Um, let me ask you, there are some people that are urging the National Assembly to stop all further agreements and contracts with China pending scrutiny of all conditions and clauses inserted uh, in them. Uh, Mr. Oba is saying that um, that's also something we're going to upset them if we do all of this scrutiny. Uh, is this something you agree with? The vision of my position is very wrong. Very, very wrong. Your, I did not say you said my... everything. I said that what you said is we should not displease. Um, they are very sensitive. I'm paraphrasing what you said, that China, we need to be that, sensitive that about the matter. Position, That's what you said. I'm just that saying. Is the position, that is the position of the minister that I'm trying to explain to your viewers. My role primarily here is to let your viewers understand the positions of the two entities, okay. the Committee of National Assembly and the position of the minister. If you ask me my direct opinion about Chinese loan, I'll tell you not to go for it at all. Okay, okay. My, that's my, my opinion on Chinese loan would be never go for it. And you know why I'll say don't go for Chinese loan? When you go to a multinational institution like the IMF or the World Bank, but when you go to an occidental uh, a country, like you uh, say, Western country, like United States of America, Britain, France, there are some cultural practices of transparency, accountability, not allowing for corruption in the perfection of the contract, which China has refused to subscribe to. And we know that as at this juncture across Africa, we've had of instances of China bribing those who come to sign contract with them in China. And we've had of instances where China can go cash to those countries. They will put cash, millions of dollars. They'll put it in a, in, in a cargo suit and fly it down to a country and pay off some officials of state. And that is why we've seen instances from Pakistan to Sri Lanka to Djibouti to Zambia to to uh, uh, to some uh, uh, South American countries, we've seen the opacity, the opacity that China likes to perfect its total under helping China in ultimately in ultimately getting national assets of those countries when those countries default. So if the Nigerian parliamentarians were to look at the, the inimical cultural practices of China, now, they should make sure that they put they pass a legislation that says nobody should get loan from China in Nigeria. Well, how would we do some of this? I mean, one of the um, arguments put forward by the minister is the percentage uh, for the loan, uh, the interest rate that needs to be paid, and it's relatively low. Uh, we have this capital project that yes. needs to be executed. What would be your suggestion? The only thing that is working against the minister at this juncture with Bolaba, this is my opinion. Because all along, prior to coming to my opinion about China, I was explaining the positions of the committee and the position uh, and that of the minister. And I was telling you that ostensibly the two sides seemed to be playing to logic to me. Uh, but when, when I gave my position, I said they should not go for Chinese loan at all because Chinese loans are usually perfected in an atmosphere of opacity, in an atmosphere of darkness. And we have seen that usually that opacity helps some people in the countries that we have followed to uh, enrich themselves at the expense of the state. Now, it be us now on Abechi and the government of President Muhammad Buhari to say our, pen, uh, 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 our price for taking this money would only be the percentage specified on the contract. All right, Mr. Because, Oba. Let me give you an example in the case of Lagos State. You have Lagos to do that State, as quickly as possible, please. What did you say? I said if you could do that in 30 seconds so we can give some talk time to Mr. Davies. We have him back on the line. Lagos State claims to have spent 
X amount of money on the light rail from Marina to Kokomaiko. That X amount of money is 10 times the value declared by the Chinese company doing the construction in its book at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. You see the contradiction? Lagos State government is officially claiming they have spent X amount of money. The company doing the construction, a Chinese company, is claiming in the, in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that the total value of the contract is X minus 10. All right. And, uh the, same con and the same type of contract that the, com the company has done in Ethiopia and another country in Africa is more consistent with what they declared in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And it right. is claiming another Mr. Baba, I'm afraid I have to interject now. Let's give uh, Mr. Um, uh, David some talk time. The network hasn't been really um, good from his end. Uh, Mr. David, um, can you hear me? Do we have Mr. Davis again? Uh, okay. Um, apologies for the back and forth. Uh, technology can have a mind of its own. So we'll wrap things up. We thank Mr. Davis uh, for the efforts to uh, join us. But we'll wrap things up by asking uh, this very last question of you, uh, Mr. Oba. I was, I was telling you before we came, we came yeah. on here, I was telling you that, you know, I, I, I do some incantations and juju. <laughs> you see how those do? No, your network is better. That's what you're saying. All right. Um, will the house, before we let you go quickly, will the house be able during its tenure to indeed um, successfully review the uh, loan agreement and conditions uh, signed by the federal government? Even Serap is now in court asking uh, for uh, some details. Do you see that happening? I, said, I must use this opportunity to celebrate Serap for wanting to bring the government to accountability by letting the government own up on what exactly is our commitment thus far contractually to China on all the monies borrowed from China. That's what wonderful. And I must say too, that it is the responsibility of parliament. Indeed, the powers of parliament, if they're not comfortable with how the facilities from China, how those facilities are gotten, how those facilities are managed, it is within the powers of parliament to even legislate that Nigeria must not borrow from China anymore. All right, Mr. Golaoba. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for always bringing some new perspective to the conversation. It's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, we'll take our plus reports now. And when we return, as the gubernatorial elections um, in Edo and Ondo states draw closer, we ask, would women be given a chance to govern this time around? That's our conversation after this break. The Labour Party has distanced itself from the suit by the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, against the federal government for the continuous retention of the nation's service chiefs. The national chairman of the party, Abdul Salam Abubakar, while speaking to newsmen in Abuja, said that the party, which is a member of the CUPP, does not in any way support the suit because it does not reflect the position of every member of the coalition. I have been forced to address the press, the press, the press conference, by the recent media controversy as well as the action taken by an individual to sue service chief in the name of CUPP. I want to state categorically as the formidable stakeholders in CUPP that I am against the action of suing the federal government on the issue of the continuous stay of the service chiefs. Let me also state that I, 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 I and the Labour Party do not support the federal government's decision to continue to ret retain the service chiefs in the face of rising insecurity in the North Seas and other parts of the country. But we will not also allow ourselves to be, to be caged 